Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at Patreon.com slash Inspired Disorder. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality. This is my top five films from the Purge franchise. Uh, this is a franchise that I've enjoyed re-watching. I don't know what inspired the rewatch. There is a new release that just came out, The Forever Purge. Uh, and I had seen a couple of the Purge movies in the past, but fell off. It felt like reality was getting a little bit too close to uh, the reality of the Purge. Um, but, you know, now that Trump's not in office, the franchise hits a little bit different, which I appreciate. I enjoy uh, I enjoyed re-watching the franchise. It's, I mean, it's only five movies. There are plans for a sixth film to be written uh, by James uh, DeMonico, who is the writer of all of the films. He directed the first three of the Purge films, The Purge, The Purge Anarchy, and The Purge Election Year. Um, he also wrote and created the TV show, The Purge, which I have not watched. Watched like an episode or two. But I enjoyed rewatching the Purge franchise, so let's get into it with my top five. Let's rank them. Let's rank these top five films. Starting off with number five, this is the one I liked the least. Not to say I didn't like it, but I liked it the least, and I'll say why I liked it the least. Coming in at number five is The First Purge, which came out in 2018. It is not the first movie in the franchise. It is a prequel. Uh, it came out fourth in the franchise. This one came out after election year. Uh, but this shows, the reason I do like it is because it shows how The Purge started. Uh, the reason I don't like it is because there's these stupid contacts that you don't see anywhere else in the film ever. And even in that, I mean, in any of the other films, you don't see these contacts. But even in the movie, The First Purge, these contacts, which are designed for the science, the scientists who are make, do, running this experiment, uh, they use those contacts to, uh, you know, just to monitor people, to watch people as they kill or whatever they're going to do on this purge night. Uh, but you don't see these contacts anywhere. The, the technology of these contacts doesn't make sense. It's not, it, like the movie takes place in like modern day. It's not like some futuristic time of contact wearing. Uh, so I didn't like the contact part. But then they just disappear. Most of the like surveillance that's done by these scientists is done by like just regular security cameras. So it was like an unnecessary, as an unnecessary aspect to it that just bugged me a little bit. And because of that, it, it brought it all the way. Because there's on all the other ones, there's nothing that is like, oh, why did they even do that? This one, why did they even do that? Uh, but it's interesting. So the the how the whole purge fran purge started in this world is uh, a new political group called the NFFA, the New Founding Fathers of America, uh, which is basically the conservative party currently. Trump's conservative. What Trump had done to the conservative party, really like amplifying it, really bringing in all the white white supremacist groups and KKK and all the hate groups. Like Trump really rallied all those hate groups together and made them part of the conservative party, which most of them were anyway. Uh, the NFFA, supposed to be a third party that got popular, but we all know it's the conservative party. It's basically like if the NRA was a political party, which they might as well be the uh, conservative party as well. But the NFFA gets in power and they have this experiment that they're doing uh, where they're going to shut down Staten Island, and for 12 hours, they're going to eliminate all crimes. No, no emergency services will be available. All crimes are permitted. Uh, and the, the idea is what, what the, the goal of the government being controlled by the NFFA, the goal of that government is to eliminate all the poor people and the brown people and it's it's very pointed the 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 premise of what they're trying to do and it's just interesting to see how it all starts uh it kind of ends with like after the purge ends at the end of this film like everybody's like 
arms over shoulders like we did it we defended ourselves we survived the purge yay we're successful but then meanwhile like we know the reality of the purge because we've seen because the prequel we've seen other purge movies where it's just it just that was just the first one they, they didn't end anything it's just they were they they were the experiment and within the experiment like everybody's partying when they when they're given the opportunity to do whatever they want they end up just partying. So the government wants to juice those numbers. They want to get the ball rolling. So they, they introduce, then you start seeing these hate groups show up, and you start seeing, like, they, they paid, like, ringers, like crazy people. They're, like, bringing people in. It's like, do you want to participate in the purge? We're going to give you five grand, and you can go out. You have to wear these contacts. You go out. So they, like, juice the numbers, claiming it's science. But there is no control group. I mean, I guess other... Civiliz- uh, the rest of the country is the control group. I don't know. Uh, but the beginning, it was just they just wanted to party, and then things started going downhill once the government started uh, juicing those numbers, uh, juicing the impact. Um, but, yeah, a good movie. I enjoyed it. it. It's, like, interesting to see how it all started. But as far as the franchise, it's my least favorite. Uh, so that's why it's number five. So moving on to number four, my fourth favorite purge movie in the franchise is the very first purge movie called the purge which came out in 2013 a very simple independent movie takes place in one location you're you're in the the home of a family inside of a a nice gated community all the neighbors have super nice houses the owner of this house is uh is ethan hawk and he's works for the security company that sells all of you know sells like these roll up doors that are a big part of the franchise in general he's he's made all this money selling all these security equipment to all of his neighbors um you know and they're talking about how they they you know they were able to add an addition to the house uh but it's a very simple movie that that introduces this premise that for whatever reason the government's like we're going to do a purge. It's the purge night. Everybody's hunkering down in their their protected things. But the family inside Ethan Hawke's house are betraying him. They're letting people in to his his what should be a lockdown home during the purge. Uh, but the threat is misguided. Two people are let in that aren't supposed to be there. The daughter brings in the boyfriend and the son sees a, a black guy outside that's needs that's looking for shelter, looking because he's being tracked down, he needs help. So the the son opens the door, lets the black guy in. Right? So the movie is like trying to show how what we perceive as a threat isn't necessarily a threat and the threats that are really potentially dangerous to us are the ones that are unexpected right it's like it's like people worried about their kids being kidnapped but like most kids that are kidnapped are done so by a family member or like abused like child abuse is usually done by somebody in the family uh it's not a stranger and what happens in this movie is that it's the the girl's boyfriend that's the dan- the real danger not the black guy um so it has similar themes that are carried out in the other films, but it's all self-contained. The reason why it's number two and not, my, or not number five, I mean, it, it could have been higher. But this one, because it was the first film in the franchise, and one of the things that I, I, I kind of enjoy in the franchise are the creativity in the masks that people wear, which you really see in, in all of the other films. It's just this first film. There's no, I mean, there's a group of kids that show up, these privileged white kids that want to come in and kill the black guy. And they wear kind of masks, but they're not as creative. Like the mask game in the Purge franchise really takes a step up after this first film. So because of that, because I think masks are a big part of the franchise, just the look of the franchise, these crazy masks that people wear, uh, because those aren't there, that's why it's number four. That's it. That's the only reason. Otherwise, it's a good movie. You know, it's simple. All the other ones are a lot bigger. 
but it, it, and it's it's good. Ethan Hawke's good. Performances are good. The story's good. The themes from the th- first one carry throughout the whole franchise. Uh, but that's my number four film, The Purge. The Purge from 2013. Moving on to my number three pick. My number three pick in the Purge franchise is The Purge Anarchy, which is the the sequels. The first sequel in the franchise uh, came out one year later, 2014. Uh, This one is bringing Frank Grillo, who I first really... He came onto my radar, really, where where I really paid attention to his name as an actor was the most recent movie, uh, Boss Level, which is a great action movie. Uh, but this one, unknowing it was him. Like, watching this, like, is that Frank Grillo? Is that the dude from from Boss Level? And it is. And he's pretty great. He's like, he's a dude on a mission, which you don't find out what his mission is. He's going to kill somebody, obviously, on the purge. He's out purging. But while he's out purging, this one takes place in L.A., uh, you have like all these different characters. It's a little bit into the purge. So even like, you know, everybody's got their, their security, their home security. And you're seeing like throughout the city, the different, you know, types of security measures people have, uh, and what they're doing. Um, and there's a, a, a couple, uh, which one of the guys from, uh, um, what's that movie, that show called, um, Friday night lights. He's the, the the artistic quarterback guy from that that show. Uh, he's one of he's the one of the people in this couple that gets stranded in the city. Uh, you have Lakeith Stanfield in a very small role in this one. Didn't even realize it was him. Like I didn't really know him. Like this must have been one of his first movies or something like that. Uh, and I apologize if I just said his name wrong. That that could be entirely possible. But uh, it's you know this group of people and then there's this mother daughter that uh are also trying to um like they're they're trying to survive it's like this group of people just trying to survive the night in LA going through cool killing you get to see Frank Grillo be be his badass self protecting these people even though he doesn't want to but he needs a car his car breaks down so these people tell him that like oh if you get me here we have a car that we can give you and you can go do your thing. Um, you also get to see the government sending in actual, like these semi trucks with giant Gatling guns on the back. And that's, that's how they're, they're contributing to the purge, you know, juicing their numbers even further. Um, but yeah, it's a good movie. And in a lot of ways, there's another movie in this franchise. That's very similar. I just think the other one, does a little bit more that's a little bit more impactful i care a little bit more about the characters uh but this one's still good this one also shows the underbelly the other things that happen in the purge like this this uh this dad actually is that the one in purge anarchy yeah you could become a martyr like rich people will will like if you're a terminally ill person like poor person and you can go and become a martyr where rich people will just order you like like uber eats and you come to their house and then they take pleasure in killing you like they release the beast uh this movie also shows kind of the cult nature of wealthy people and the whole purge thing um but yeah it's a good movie it introduced some more the mask game uh this is where i mean it's the second movie in the franchise and this is like you could you could tell that the this is the mask game is part of the franchise this is where you realize that it because it's scary it's scary to see people in these weird masks um really weird like homemade weird masks uh but yeah really fleshes out the purge as because you're seeing it in a whole city great so that's my number three purge anarchy you got frank grillo who's a great action star uh, great action actor. Uh, the story, the reason why he's going on the purge is great. Uh, you know, and and the the end, how that actually ends, and how his decision, how his decision to be uh, forgiving, actually helps him, is great. Uh, but yeah, number three, it's it's right in the middle, right in the middle, the purge anarchy. 
Moving on to number two, my second favorite movie in the Purge franchise is the most recent, The Purge, or The Forever Purge. It's a movie that I reviewed uh, recently, yesterday. Um, this one is... Uh, a lot of different things happen in this one. Uh, this one is takes place in Texas. You have the whole immigrants coming into the country at the movie. Americans are the immigrants trying to flee. Uh, the American uh, refugees trying to flee to Mexico and Canada. Uh, you have all of these hate groups that have been propped up by the, the NFFA over the franchise, have just taken over and have decided to just continue their murder uh, and, and realize that they can overpower the government and that the basically the government eats its own tail because the NFFA in this movie is back in control, back in the political control, and they reinstated the purge. And because of that, these hate groups took the opportunity to now not only kill everybody that's not white, but also you know attack the government for trying to stop them. So it's it's they they created a monster that they could not control, uh, but yeah, the Forever Purge. There's there's a lot of this movie that I really enjoyed. Uh, the fact that it's not in a city is is interesting. I mean, the very end of the movie takes place in a city, but it's it's a completely different take on on the Purge. Being in Texas, you don't really mostly the movie is not the Purge. It doesn't take place during the actual Purge shows you a little bit before the night of the purge and then it shows you the aftermath of the purge uh and how people aren't stopping um a great movie but not my number one and obviously there's only five films out so you everybody you know if they're keeping score will know what my number one film is so let's just get to that if you want to hear my in-depth thoughts on the forever purge watch my review uh, but let's move on to my number one film. My number one, my favorite Purge movie in the franchise is Purge Election Year. And this is one that I, I don't think I had seen this one. I don't think I had seen the first Purge or Purge Election Year. Like I had, I don't know. My, I, you know, when Trump became elected, I kind of tapped out. And this one came out 2016. Uh, and it was just like, uh, it's like reality is too, is too much. I can't, it's blurred. Like it, it, it's too, it's too much of a possibility, you know? And the purge election year could have been, could ease, like we're, we, it feels so much like we're just a step or two from the forever purge happening. Uh, but the purge election year, I like, you got Frank Grillo is back. He is now the lead security guy for a presidential candidate, a female uh, senator who is running for president. Uh, she's running and she wants to end the purge um, against, she wants to beat the NFFA who keeps winning. And the NFFA, because of the purge, they hammer those, those uh, stats of like low crime, low poverty, because they're all dead, uh, low, uh, like, low uh, unemployment because they're all dead like they 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 pump these stats that make it sound like they're doing good but if you look at how they're doing it is that they're just killing everybody that falls under that line um so anyway this one's election year which already gives it a, a lot more weight like understanding how important an election is especially after this last one uh with trump and biden like the importance of getting Trump out of office, you feel that in election year because like these people, I mean, it's more so in this movie, obviously, because the purge is like is is more literally what's going what what a lot of these politicians would love to do. But there's like still that 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 just like fear and need to get away from people that want to just destroy a huge percentage of the population because it's just too much for them to handle, uh, too much for them to give a shit about. Um, there's also like, I mean, it's, it's like a revolution. It's, it's, it's like these people that all want the same thing and they're all doing different things. You have one of these characters that's like this freelance medic person that goes out on the purge because all the emergency services are closed down, but they go out and they try and help people and heal people. You got like these 
radical extremists that are trying to uh, plan this assassination. You've got the the wealthy elite uh, part of the NFA that's doing like their cult sacrifices. You have so much stuff. You got the Frank Grillo stuff. You got the murder tourism uh, thing, which is an interesting aspect of like. And this is like the first time in the purge in the world of the purge where elected officials are open to being purged as well. Obviously, it's an election year, so the NFFA would clearly want somebody to kill the, the, the opposition, the only opposition they have. So, of course, they would lift the ban on attacking, uh, you know, potential uh, federal employees. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a great, it's a great movie. And, it, like, I really care about these characters. There's a, a business owner and then one of his employees, and they have, like, a little bond thing where the employee is, like, an immigrant, and, like, he's worked there for many years, and the, the owner's like, listen, man, when I, want, when I retire, I want to give this to you. Like, you've been here helping me out for so long. You, you know, you've, you've made a different life for yourself, and it's like you care about these characters. You care about Grillo. You care about this politician that actually wants to do the right thing, right? She's trying to stop revolutionaries from doing something that would pretty much bene benefit herself but also would create a martyr situation um but yeah purge election year i thought it did uh, all the same things that the other purge movies do as far as messaging as far as what it's trying to say but it it sets it in like a setting where the stakes are higher than just surviving the night like, these people need to survive the night because they need to be around to change things. They need to be around to make this, this country better. Uh, and because of that, I thought it was the best. I thought it was the best. And that was the last one that James uh, DeMonico directed. He directed The Purge, which is the first film that came out, released in the, in the franchise. He directed Purge Anarchy and Purge Election Year. This one took place in D.C., obviously. Anarchy took place in L.A., both of which are cities. So it was refreshing to see The Forever Purge take place in a, in a completely different environment, uh, but still all written by James D'Amico. And apparently uh, the Blumhouse company that produces all of these movies uh, wanted to do a sixth film. James DeMonico uh, wrote... Uh, and, and thought that uh, The Forever Purge was going to be the last one, but he has ideas to write a sixth film, so I'm excited to see that when it comes out. Uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed this, this franchise. I really did. Let me go over my list uh, of my top for Purge movies. The, the first Purge, which is a prequel that came out after Purge election year. Uh, so it definitely took a step down like if you were watching these in chronological order of release, you have the first, the purge, you have purge anarchy, then you have purge election year, and then you go and do a prequel, the purge, the first purge, which does good things to set up. It fills in that gap as far as the franchise itself, but I just didn't think it was executed as well as the other ones. Uh, then you have uh, the forever purge, then you have uh, the six, uh, the the uh, never mind. The Forever Purge is the most newest one. So anyway, let me do... I think I was <laughs> doing that anyway. So top five, one more time. Number five, The First Purge. Number four, The Purge. Number three, uh, The Purge Anarchy. Number four, The Forever Purge. And my favorite, uh, number, f number one. Uh, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm doing with numbers anymore. My brain has been purged. My ability to think has been purged. Uh, number five is the first purge number four is the purge number three is the purge anarchy number two is the forever purge and my number one purge film is the purge election year i really enjoy the franchise uh it's it, i love watching them in order i watch them in order of the story so I actually watched the first Purge first, and then I watched the Purge second, 
Uh, they're actually, my ranking is almost in order of their chronological in the universe of the Purge, except for the Forever Purge. Uh, almost made my number one, but the fact, the, the stakes in the, in, in the Purge election year, I thought, brought it up. And Frank Grillo's great, uh, you know, who wasn't in the, in the Forever Purge, uh, but I've heard is going to be back in the, the newest one. That, that should be coming out. But anyway, the Purge franchise, I enjoyed it. I hope you do too. Fingers crossed uh, America doesn't turn into uh, the end of the Forever Purge. Get yourself some amazing coffee over at stationhousecoffee.com and follow Station House Coffee on Instagram. That's your place for small batch, single origin, premium coffee brewed in Thetford Center, Vermont, shipped directly to you. Go now to stationhousecoffee.com and order yourself some amazing coffee. And don't forget to follow Station House Coffee. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on IGTV, YouTube, and everywhere else podcasts are found. Binge the full week ad free over at patreon.com slash inspired disorder. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at inspireddisorder.com. Follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful week, everybody. Peace. Oh!